Forbes Books presents The Great Digital Transformation with Gerard Zatvani, highlighting the pioneers that reimagined possibilities and reimagined businesses. Hey, it's Joe Partavilla once again, and welcome back to our continuing conversation with Dominic Stowe, OSF's Regional Vice President in Australia and New Zealand. Let's get back to our B2B talk, and even though I prefer never to talk about the pandemic ever again, we have to discuss COVID's long-term impact on supply chains down under. It's definitely one of those things that's coming up um, and being discussed a lot more. And I mean, New Zealand, Australia have actually been impacted quite hard with the reduced shipping um, from China. I mean, obviously the whole world is, but there's been quite a lot. So again, uh, the retailers uh, are looking around, you know, not ordering stuff that's not going to sell. So there's a lot of looking at what sells and what doesn't and of course if they've got old systems that are clunky they can't build that picture and don't understand the trends and all that that well so and they really want to be able to start to build up that intelligence and views around what should we be ordering when and all that and trying to reduce what's sat in a warehouse to actually slotting it into this slot this very tightly constrained supply chain and it, it's it, it's a challenge i mean i i, I you know i, I would definitely say it is a challenge it comes up in discussions but you know the smart companies are looking um uh moving into marketplace so actually leveraging channel partners and and all that so you know that that they're actually pulling together a wider product offering but not being with all the hassle of dealing with the supply chain on it so they Mm -hmm. they're bringing together so they sell their core product and the stuff they can manufacture, but rather than set up a whole new supply chain about something that they wanted to go to, they're partnering with another organization, they're sharing customer data, and they're consolidating that in a marketplace. And that's a, a real thing that's starting to be driven. Uh, definitely, and, you know, there's a couple of um, key marketplaces being created, and, and independent companies are creating their own at the minute. So mm. it, it, it is changing the view of the world a little bit, for sure. Mm. You know, data is in the center of everything and the way data flows through enterprises is important. Um, And in the past, uh, you would have, let's say, these famous ERP projects uh, that companies would do that would take 10 years and would cost them an arm and a leg and and it's it's in order to capture data. Well, those things um, and those years are in the past. Now you need to put things together in a much more flexible and agile way. Um, You need to have systems that can give you the proper data as close to real time as possible. Why? Because then you are able to see that in your market, a specific item is in demand. And you are able to also act upon it and and order more, uh, work with your supply chain and work with your procurement in order to make sure that that item gets to you in a timely manner. And having having these systems that allow you this kind of flexibility nowadays is no longer like a five years uh, project. You can set up things that are just enough for you to give you enough uh, visibility to, to provide you enough data so that you can uh, make uh, proper business decisions, smart business decisions, and to have enough details so that you can order the right things, so you can bring to the market the right things, uh, despite the, the supply chain challenges. Because, yeah, you, you, you are no longer working with a, a just-in-time, a real-time uh, supply chain. Uh, you work with a much longer um, time frame, but... Uh, the, the, the mindset of being able to capture the data, being able to use the data in a meaningful way um, and that data to properly flow through your uh, enterprise, through your company, uh, from sales to procurement to supply chain to accounting to whatever, uh, that has to be there. This mindset of, hey, I'm looking at my data, I'm capturing uh, information and then I'm going to make decisions based on this information. And, and if you don't have it, you're going to have a much harder time to uh, run your business. Um, you know, imagine that you are ordering stuff that doesn't uh, sell. And you do this two, three times a year. And uh, the fourth time, you're going to go out of business because mm. yeah. it's just not working. And, and Jerry, you know, this is all obviously anecdotally, but have you noticed that companies that have embraced digital transformation They've sort of made it through this sort of uh, 
Mad Max, Thunderdome uh, way of business because of the fact of all these sort of restrictions that we've been talking about, the, the digital transformation, the companies that have embraced that, they've been able to make it through that desert? Yeah, I mean, you can see it in the way they operate their business. So you can see in, in the mindset. Um, if they have the right mindset of looking at uh, things, um, the way they look at the data, the way they look at their business processes, the way they challenge themselves in everything they are doing, when a situation like this comes up, they react quickly. They react because they have the the reflexes there. It's 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 they have trained for this. You know, like think of a, a sport analogy. You train a lot for a, a competition, and then when that moment comes, you are ready. You're there. You are using your muscle memory, um, and that's that's the same thing in an enterprise. You have the right best practices, the right uh, approaches, and when something like a crisis comes up. You can react quickly, you can adapt, you can uh, do something about it. If you want a real example, I'll give you one. That it's just an incredible example. So, um, you know, yeah, again, we don't want to talk about the pandemic, but I will, because it's just, it's a good thing that kicks things off. When that kicked in and, and New Zealand went into lockdown um, and they shut all the restaurants and bars and everything like that, um, we'd put in B2B solution for wholesale for a big supermarket chain. Um and that business, you know, it got hammered, no doubt. There's no, nobody's buying, none of the restaurants are buying, no one's buying like that. Yet the demand on the, the B2C, so the normal um, uh, supermarket chain, so the other chains there was really ramping up because everyone's ordering online and um, their service center was getting really hit because of orders that were missed or missed the state. So, they set our initiative of how do we how do we keep our wholesale business going? Um, we're on this amazing B two B platform that we'd put in, and um, they came up with the idea of creating um, emergency boxes, which was a set of milk, bread, water, eggs, flour, all that stuff that would be supplied from the wholesaler because they had their own stock and stores and and all that, and the revenue would go through them. So go. So i.e. let's point the B2B to B2C to provide these emergency provisions boxes and all that. And wow. that initiative was kicked off and we were called in. And um, within a couple of weeks, it was live and working. And wow. the executive could not believe it. And it's because they'd invested in the right platform. They had thought about um, the payment mechanisms that they would be taking to B2B later. It used to be on invoice, but they could very quickly put in credit card. That was the main thing needed changing. And it was literally a few weeks and they were live and they were serving. So the wholesale side of the business kept ticking along and they were filling. And most people were just ordering a box of milk and flour. And so that then wow. took the pressure off the B2C. So that service was better. And they, they delivered it all the way through. And, and then they turned it off at the right time and flipped it back to being the wholesale and B2B wow. and, it's just an incredible story. It's it's one of those ones that it, you see the true power of where you put in, you know, um, a really good customer centric platform that's integrated wow. well with ERP to just flip it. And uh, yeah, it was a huge success. That's a great story. Thanks for sharing that, Tom. And it's funny because one of the popular words during the pandemic was the word pivot, but it's great to have the idea to pivot but how do you pivot? And luckily <laughs> you were able to be the pivot point to make that company survive. Do you think if it wasn't for your applications and the work you did, that company would be, still be around today? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're big. They're a really big food, food, but their wholesale is a franchisee. So the franchisees oh, yeah. would have been, yeah, they would have struggled. And, you know, they'd probably not be in quite as healthy position. And, you know, they've continued to invest. So, you know, the learning they had was we need to do more with our call center. We need to use more AI. So we put in more chatbots and AIs and, and to deal with if there's ever those spikes in volumes again. And, and the wholesale, the actual franchisees are more happy to invest in that now because they've seen the true value, how yes. suddenly a platform they invested in has now kept them going and then gone back to their old business, literally mm -hmm. click, click, and they're, they're going. So, you know, um, did it really help them? Absolutely. You know, was it amazing that the leadership team there and the exec had the confidence in their platforms? Brilliant, right? And it's nice when you see those stories, you know, it's uh, to be able to sit and tell people. That's but this, this really works when 
they already have that muscle memory of being able to uh, challenge themselves and, and set up systems in a way that are different. And, and, you know, they were ready in the mindset. They were ready from a, yeah. an attitude point of view. So when that crisis came and they had to do something about it, they were already prepared, mentally prepared in the way they were doing things to approach it, to kind of embrace the challenge and run with it. So that's, that's from my point of view, that's really what makes a huge difference in, in how uh, companies went through the pandemic or not. It's always a good, it's, it's always a good experience and, and we love a challenge and I personally love a challenge when, when these things have happened. Uh, we said, okay, well, let's, let's just roll with it and, and try to do everything we can to help our customers to make sure that they, we can shift their processes so that they can continue to be in business. Uh, and I can tell you the ones that were able to properly make it through it were the ones that they had this mindset of challenging themselves, the mindset of transforming their businesses, the mindset of trying new things and, and pushing the limits um, in a very aggressive manner. Uh, so those were the ones that were really uh, very successful uh, through the pandemic. Hmm. I want to pull on the thread on the word you used, attitude. And I feel like that at, the word really doesn't get used enough. And I, and I, and I, and I want to use this example of it. When you speak to companies about why they do things, and you guys will probably laugh when I say this, when you ask companies, why do you do this? It goes, well, that's because we've always done it that way. And I feel like a lot of companies that have sort of gone away from that mindset, they're the ones that are excelling now. But the ones that are in the, yeah, we've, that's the way we've always done it. How can people shake that attitude of, yeah, we've always done it that way? Yeah, that's um, it, it's very common, you know, as you said, that uh, I, I think look, I think you got to wind back a bit, right? I mean, you know, I'm from an IT background, obviously, and we've done it. And I think over particularly early 2000s to 2010, we didn't do ourselves any favors in winning confidence in businesses with giant ERP implementations that bloated out, um, building very siloed applications that were quite, you know, because it's pretty easy to do. I think, you know, cloud came along and started to turn things on its head. And, but I don't think that the, the attitudes have changed in line with it quite within business. They're still scarred. They still, yeah. you know, and that goes right back to procurement teams. Um, you know, if procurement teams are proactive and get the, get the, this is around a journey and a learning rather than we've got to have to have this price for the, for the vendor and we've got to do this and they use all those old techniques. The attitude thing is everywhere in the business, you know, it's around, and that comes from the leadership. You, you can just tell when you go, I did the supermarket chain that I'm talking about, amazing leadership, absolutely incredible forward thinking leadership. And then other organizations, you have little sparks and pillars of it, but you may even not have that consolidated view and it stops at maybe the CXO level or, or something like that. So Although I think encouraging what I would say is I think attitude is really changing. Again, I think there's, um, you're seeing now that there's an appetite across all the business functions to unify, put that customer at the center, do better. You know, it's, it's not just about making lots of money now. It's about keeping your customers. Mm -hmm. They can move like that. You know, if you're an energy company, oh, I mean, how long does it take you to change energy companies now? Like one click? I think it's like one click. You just go to a website. Oh, I'll go with them and everything's gone. So, you know, it, it's really important now. And so, you know, and then I, I'll, you know, I'll be brutally honest that there's a lot of new young blood coming up and challenging the way we're thinking in business. And there's some really smart execs and that makes a huge difference. You know, you get that sponsorship around projects. It just, it, it's really refreshing when you walk in. And I would say that every company really needs to focus on their culture and the attitudes and, challenge the way they've been thinking don't accept poor definitely from your it and infrastructure and all that but also give them a chance to spread their wings and and, and take a little bit of risk on some of the technologies and make a change mm. from that side and, and dominic let's talk to me about silos especially down in australia new zealand i know when you guys do lockdown you guys do lockdown i mean it's <laughs> you, do, you do not yeah, play around lockdown. i'm sure that comes up a lot in the conversations with with the people you work with What's some of the advice you give some of these folks or what are some of the solutions that you've come up with? 
So, uh, yeah, we love our lockdowns. Um, hats <laughs> off to the guys in Melbourne. I think they were the winners. <laughs> the uh, lockdown, I think 280 odd days last year, they were wow. locked down. Crazy. Um, and it did change working behaviors, but it also changed investment in tech and uh, particularly things like call centers and all that. So, I guess they got a real um, accelerated focus. How can we have our call center teams working remotely? And they've actually kept that model. And another little driver down under is, I mean, you've probably heard about it. We've probably got the most unaffordable housing you've ever seen in your life in the major cities and centers. And so um, employers uh, have really, you know, gained the trust through the process. And then the technologies, you know, collaboration tools like Slack, putting things in like that, you know, using, using a service desk that's, you know, connected to the sales and it's all one connected platform, you know, like, a, like Salesforce provides. What that's enabled them to do is to say to staff, you know what, you don't need to live in Auckland, you don't need to live. So you're seeing now these distributed service center teams going away um, and they can move to more affordable regions, which is great for those regions. And honestly, it's really good. They're breathing a life back into it. You know, and it's about a mindset, really. So, you know, I agree with Jerry. It's, you know, if, if you give people the tools and the technology, I think you can break those silos down. And sure, you get people together. I mean, we're here, you know, in this beautiful location. And Jerry's organized this to get the team together. It's mm. basically get the team together, do some team building, have some fun to build those relationships. Because you did, that human touch is a really great thing to have. But, you know, in terms of working, I think technology offers so many options of remote working, collaboration, and to break down those silos. And I think it's, it's a responsibility of everyone to just be mindful of it and, you know, for people to know, hey, time out, we should probably get together and do a team building or, a, you know, to get you back in the zone. So, yeah, I, I, it, it's fundamentally changed Australia and New Zealand, but the change is really, um, it's exciting. It's nice to see regions that were dropping, you know, people were leaving the smaller towns. Yeah. yeah, they're picking back up again. And that's great. You know, affordable housing. Who loves that? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because I don't like to use the word force, but something that uh, digital transformations has, has sort of done for a lot of people is it's forced people to be intentional. The old way of bumping into someone at the coffee machine or the water cooler that's obviously a thing of the past. So you have to be intentional in interacting with your customers and obviously your team. So how can people shift that passive interactions and make it more intentional? Jerry, I know that's a big part of your company and being aware of what everyone is doing and what everyone's talking about, what, the, the, what sort of like the thermometer is of the team, but it takes a, a big part of it takes being intentional. Yes, we, you need to set up um, a governance system. You need to, the collaboration doesn't just happen. Uh, you need to set it up. You need to say, okay, well, you need to have some uh, meeting system uh, when a project starts, when you have all kinds of activities. There are always meeting systems and, and ways of doing meetings with agendas, with action points. So there is an entire structure, uh, a governance structure that makes these things uh, happen. And, and that's why uh, this actually works. And we have... Uh, we have situations and colleagues that say, hey, I need to, I need to go uh, and work from my home office because at the office, every 10 minutes, somebody comes to me and, and I, I'm not able to do my work. Uh, it's, it's disruptive at times. You know? So while you have the, 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 the positive effect of having people together and be able to, to communicate better and somehow, uh, but you also have the other negative side effect of constant disruption in, in some cases. So... Yes, um, but having a proper governance system, a proper meeting system in place uh, with, with well-defined uh, outcomes and agendas in, in these meetings, this, this is, is, is very important because otherwise people would not just call somebody up, just let's, let's just chat just because. It's, it's, you, need, you need to be intentional about it. You need to have a system about it uh, with clearly defined goals in order for that to happen. And mm -hmm. that's, that's really the the focus, uh, focusing on the results that really then drives everything, the, the governance system, the meeting system, all of these things uh, will, will converge towards delivering the results. What we noticed was, um, you know, when we we're pretty much all first up, forced online and everyone's using digital tools, you're working with customers. And um, I love the human factor that came in when kids walked in in the background. Like going, yeah, you got, yeah, you got your procurement 
your big boss and next minute her beautiful little daughter comes in and mommy i want this and they're talking about a contractual deal it's just really refreshing it's actually i felt that you know we've got to know a number of our customers so much better um we were doing things like sending some wine you know new zealand and australia are pretty good with our wine we send a bottle of wine to them and then we do once a month you know yeah, and we still do it. We still just get together for the remote ones that, you know, rather than getting on a plane, uh, it's just get together, you have wine or you send, you know, like a cake or something like that and then you have a bit of a get together and, and you use the platform. I mean, Zoom, Zoom was a game, game changer because it's just a lot easier for people to hook up and have to sign up and everything like that, you know, uh, team collaboration. Uh, all these tools have, again, all come together um, really well to just, I guess, break down the silos. And I think it's just around enabling your team to have those tools. And as you said, making sure that we use them and mm. uh, from that side. So yeah, it's been good. Very human, I think. That's great. And lastly, let's talk about leadership. And, and I'll start with you, Dominic. In your role as a regional vice president, how has the last two years either changed the way you lead or improved the way you lead? What, what, what do you feel skill sets, maybe the word we like to throw around is soft skills, have you developed that have made you the leader you are today? Yeah, I've definitely changed over the last few years. Um, I, I, I realized when, when, you know, all things look uncertain in the whole world is, is you, you know, in a leadership position, you need to provide that vision and, and where you're going and, and why it's going to be good and, and, and what's going to be great. And that, that's not only our staff, that's our clients. It's around, you know, understanding and being empathetic and, and, and getting all that so i think for me i became way more connected to my people i mean i used to be pretty connected but i mean literally you know i found i was really into the devil of the detail around how our team's doing how our clients are doing and and, and that's the first thing i think I, I just sort of rather than running around like a headless chicken jumping on flights to wellington and auckland i, I kind of had a breather it just that, that natural thing. And I think that just allows you to have a little bit of um, a reflection on yourself and where you can add a lot of value. And, and people just want to see that we're heading here. And, you know, Jerry does it. He'll stand up like this morning. He stood up to the whole team and he said where we're heading and how we're going. And you can see it. That's what people, you know, if you work for any organization and clients want to hear it as well. I mean, they like to know where we're heading. They want to know about the recent investment we've had. It means that they're working with a successful company and we're obviously doing something right. And that gives them the confidence to go forward. So yeah, I think my biggest change was really around back to the people and less charging around on the business and the sales and, and all that, because that kind of took care of itself. Hmm. And Jerry, uh, obviously, you're not from the Elon Musk school of leadership. Uh, how about you? What do you? How do you feel you've you've developed over the last couple of years? I I, I like uh, Elon Musk for many things, many things. He, I like the fact that he's bold. I like the fact that he was really challenging some assumption in the industry. I like the fact that he surrounded himself uh, with uh, smart people, people that are driven and inspired. These are all great things. Uh, I don't necessarily like uh, his way of just talking for, I don't know, talking sometimes, not even thinking through what he's doing <laughs> and, and just talking. Sometimes you need to filter yourself. Like it's, 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 uh, it's, 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 it's good not to be all the time what we call yourself. <laughs> it's, it's, it's good to think before you speak, you know, to be a little bit more intentional about what yeah. you're doing. It's good to also pay attention to how your actions are affecting the life of the people around you and how your words affect uh, the feelings of others and the life of other people. Because as leaders, we, we you know, we in, in my company, we have now 2,000 employees with their families and everything. Everything that we do uh, affects their day-to-day -day and in a way or another matters. So we cannot just speak uh, freely without uh, any kind of filter just because you want to be genuine. You want to be... <laughs> I think there is too much... I think there is too much um, value and, and too much... Um, emphasis put on you need to be real but but what is real like 
talking without properly thinking uh, uh, before, it's not necessarily real. It's just unfiltered stuff. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's, I think that there is a, a, a little bit more uh, a place for thinking things through before you are talking, uh, especially when you know that what you are saying and how you're saying things and how you interact with people really affects the people around you. You know, uh, Elon Musk's uh, style of leadership, uh, it's, 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 it's not black or white. You have things that uh, I absolutely love and things that I don't like, and, and that's fine. And when so, did you realize, Jerry, that words matter? Because that's important. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people say, ah, they're just saying this. They're just talking. They're trying to be real. But as a leader <laughs> along the way of you building OSF, when did you realize that every word you say was going to be picked up on, I'm sure, from employee one to employee 2000 now? But when did you discover the impact of your own words? Well, I, it was early in the company life when uh, I uh, realized that um, by, by talking to people that they don't necessarily have my context. They don't under necessarily understand my entire context and where I'm coming from. So um, sometimes uh, even, even in, in sometimes cultural things, uh, you don't have the same background um, than the people around you. So they would not understand you the way you meant it um, and and with the proper context uh, context matters and uh, I, I I ended up uh, hurting people just because I didn't pay attention to how I was speaking and the words I was using and and uh, we were essentially on in terms of information we were not uh, on different places we were on the same page but just because I didn't phrase it properly. I ended up hurting somebody's uh, feelings, and and I, I, you know, it happened once, twice, three times, and then I, I started realizing that hey, uh, actually, it 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 matters um, to kind of step back a little bit and, and filter things out a little bit, uh, thinking things through a little bit before you speak and willy nilly mm -hmm. say whatever you it passes through your mind. Um, so that that's. And why? Because you care about people. It's, it's, you don't want to offend people. You don't want to piss off people. What you really want is to convey a message. And that, that's the purpose of communication. That's the purpose of interaction. Mm -hmm. the, the end of it is you want to convey information and you want to create a good environment conducted towards results and performance. And, and what's, what's the point of, of messing it all up by just creating a tense environment or, or something that you didn't even want it to do? You know, it just... Yeah. It's just because you didn't pay attention to how you were speaking. It's, it's... Wow. Well, that's great. I mean, it required some self-awareness. Like you said, it took you a couple of times and you realized, oh, shoot, I got to fix this. And Dominic, I'm going to give you the last word. What kind of leader is uh, Jerry? Uh, what, you know, been, what, you've been with him for about a year. I, I mean, obviously, you got to be careful with your words at this point. Oh. But talk to me about uh, Jerry as a leader and, and running OSF. Uh, you know, the first word that came to mind was crazy, but that's just not fair. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, just words not, matter, it, Dominic. Words matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, it wasn't that. Like, um, so what, what Jer Jerry's real strength, and, you know, and that's part, you know, we'd been approached by other companies to sell. And, you know, I, I guess, you know, it's a, it's a little bit of a dating game when you meet. Um, and what I liked is Jer Jerry's got a vision that it is not, it, it's not constrained by where to go and all that. Um, People are right are really at the forefront of his mind, right? So you just heard what Jerry said, and I think you know any any leader. We're a services business, you know. You know, we we have people, we do stuff, and, and you've got to that. And, and Jerry had a very set similar set of values around the people and their growth of those people. Challenging, you know, when we're doing well, actually challenging. How we're we doing? Can we do better? Can we mm -hmm. do that? And I and I really respect and like that. I. I I think that's something that Jerry does a great job. You know, we'll all be like happy, hey, we've done this. And then Jerry will drop the bomb about his next crazy idea. There's the word <laughs> crazy, right? And it's great. It actually makes it exciting. It makes, um, you know, as a, you know, a level of the senior management in the organization, it makes it good. It makes you feel that you're constantly moving forwards, you know, one step forwards is the, the OSF, we, we sort of say now and again. Um, and, and, and that's, 
that's a good thing. And, and that's Jerry, you know, and there's a whole army of people with a similar set of values that work that way. So, you know, for me, it gives us confidence that we're going from strength, strength to strength. We're building great relationships. And, you know, I know, I know that we'll always do right by our people. So make sure you come to work and be happy, right? That's great. Uh, Jerry, did he do a good job answering that? We're going to keep uh, Dom around. <laughs> I think we share these values. Uh, and that's why we, we, we are today working together. It's, we share these values and, and, and being intentional about how we deal with our people and, and how we help them grow. And, uh, and uh, this this how this entire thing comes together. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think uh, we, we, we share that and we, we have a very healthy working uh, relationship. So again, as I mentioned before, like making um, things change when things are actually uh, going well and you are doing well, it's sometimes people look at it as crazy. Why, why, why are you doing that? <laughs> but that's, that's exactly the right time to do it. And that's, that's when we evolve. That's when that's the best time to evolve and, and go to the next level. And uh, yeah, there is a little bit of craziness in this, in this <laughs> constant challenging of, Hey, let's, let's have fun. Let's go crazy about it. Let's, uh, you can do uh, something even more ambitious. Why not? Awesome. Uh, well, but doing this with your team, like having them all coming together, having them, you know, like you feel that this is moving like a team. It's, it's, it's a team process, not a, you know, I woke up uh, in the morning and said, ah, today I feel like changing everything. It's not <laughs> like that. It's it's coming from the team, with the team and moving forward as, as one team. You know, that's that's uh, in that's really what's, what's powerful about it. Awesome. Well, Dominic, looks like you're going to be sticking around OSF for a little while. Thank you very much for yeah, uh, yeah. joining us on the podcast. Hi, it's a real pleasure. This has been The Great Digital Transformation with Gerard Zatvani. To participate in the conversation, go to GerardZatvani.com. The Great Digital Transformation is a production of Forbes Books.